So before going to the presentation, uh, which where we will look into metadata for linguistic linked data with linked data principles, uh, you can grab a quick iced coffee, uh, a frappe from Greece. And um, yeah, metadata, why metadata? Uh, metadata have always been important for uh, finding data and they have become even more now due to the vast amounts of data that are shared through central catalogs. Um, Dieter mentioned EOSC a little while ago, uh, catalogs that come with metadata with about data from different user communities and for different communities, uh, allowing to uh, support uh, interdisciplinary research. So metadata have become very crucial for making data fair, findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And uh, this presentation will uh, concentrate mainly on interoperability between data and tools. So Mike, that was a very good question. Um, for metadata, it's important that we talk not only about data, but also for language processing tool services, because it's metadata, the first stage for making them interoperable. And this is the definition, a slight version of the definition that uh, Jorge just mentioned from the open minted uh, and meta share vocabularies. Um, I'm not going to go into the linked data principles uh, because uh, Christian has already uh, presented them. Um, I just wanted to have them here as a reminder. And I wanted to say that they apply to metadata vocabularies just as they apply to data because metadata are data themselves and they also have to follow these principles. I just wanted to emphasize two features, uh, relations between metadata concepts which enable semantic inference and allow us to get uh, uh, richer knowledge about data and also the combined use of different types of uh, resources uh, following uh, LD principles like RDF all ontologies and Skoskov vocabularies. This is a common uh, practice in metadata schemas, metadata models. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction into metadata vocabularies for linked data, mostly linguistic, focusing on linguistic linked data. Uh, in a 10 minutes um, presentation, we couldn't go into all of them, but I just wanted to have a common ground for the discussion. So it's definitely Dublin Core, the base for everything. Um, this is used as a base also for the DCAT profile, which is a popular metadata model for uh, describing data sets. Uh, it's used uh, with uh, various extensions like the DCAT uh, application profile, which is used for the European Open Data Portal. And it has been an inspiration for the schema.org dataset uh, part, which is the one used by the Google dataset search engine and has thus become very, very popular. Due to its popularity, uh, it's now been extended by various research communities uh, for various types of uh, uh, research needs, like uh, addressing, uh, for instance, uh, the description of uh, software in code meta, but also there are bio schemas for the biological uh, bio domain. There are other uh, vocabularies that look into other metadata aspects, um, metadata properties of data sets like data rights or void for linked data sets. For our discussion, uh, main, our main uh, focus should be on metadata vocabularies for linguistic or linguistically relevant data and tools. Uh, this includes the clearing concept registry, which I will present a little bit later and discuss about it. Uh, the MSO, that's the ontology, the old version of the MetaShare schema that uh, uh, quite a few clearing centers already use, either as is or with um, variations, I mean the MetaShare schema. Uh, the old version is now in version two, it's been updated uh, and continuously curated. Uh, the complementary OMTD share that comes from the Open Minted project and which focused on specific metadata elements, format, uh, annotation type uh, and um, tool service functions. Uh, the OLEA, 
that's a repository for uh, linguistic data categories for annotation and um, NLP applications and machine readable dictionaries and the LIME module. Um, it's the metadata module for the Ontolex Lemon that was briefly presented by Jorge before. Um, there are many more metadata vocabularies, not just these ones. And there are also controlled vocabularies which are implemented in SCOS, for instance, uh, in the SCOS format, in the SCOS language, in the SCOS model. Uh, the most important one for uh, when you describe a language resource, a linguistic data set, is language. And you can use for language just a flat list of codes like the ISO 639 codes. And already this is a good step towards standardizing metadata and having a common shared vocabulary using the language codes. If we use linked data uh, approaches, we can also use codes from, um, from resources that are already in the linked data cloud and get more information, not just the language, but also additional information. So if we use a code from Clodalog or Lexfo, you also get uh, bibliographical references, the language family to which a language be uh, belongs. So this is how linked data can support metadata, uh, can support, sorry, more information are important for metadata. Also other vocabularies for different metadata properties, control vocabularies for access rights, domain, etc., and many more. So if you want to describe a metadata record, or if you want to create a catalog of metadata records for your community, for uh, describing your, uh, the resources that you want to share with others, uh, which metadata model should you use? That's difficult to discuss, but uh, uh, linked data approaches can help in this. Um, this is one of the approaches. This is an approach that was taken for the Link Hub uh, catalog. It's a catalog that uh, collected records, information about language resources drawn from multiple sources like the Clarion VLO, Metashare, LRE map, and presented that in a harmonized metadata model that includes, it's not a unique thing, it includes concepts, elements, and values taken from Dublin Core, like description. DCAD or MSO like this. Through the identifiers, one, a human user can find and uh, get more information what this concept means. It's the description from DC and uh, it has a human readable definition, labels uh, in various languages, just as Christian said first in, in his presentation. So this is one way of achieving semantic interoperability across resources uh, through a harmonized model. And the way this is done in uh, Clarin, um, Dieter spoke about the virtual language observatory, those coming from Clarin communities and not only know about this, it aggregates metadata records from various sources of digital humanities and social sciences communities, again, described with different models. The way this come into the VLO is by exploiting uh, the CMDI infrastructure. So for each different um, resource type uh, coming from a different community or with, uh, from a different model like corpora, lexica, sign language corpora, tools, etc., there's a specific uh, profile. A profile is a set of components, is a set of metadata elements, but also components, which are semantically coherent metadata elements and can be shared with other users. So you could have a profile for a lexicon or for a corpus, and the part that speaks about persons and organizations can reuse the same component. Um, profiles and metadata records uh, use the XML, uh, XML technology for CMDI. But this doesn't suffice for achieving semantic interoperability. What is important is that this is achieved through the link of each metadata element or component in a CMDI profile to a concept which is stored either in the Clarin concept registry or a concept that is um, comes from another metadata vocabulary, another uh, yeah, another metadata vocabulary again with a unique uh, persistent ID. Uh, there's also the possibility to use in CMDA profile controlled vocabularies in uh, the form of scores. 
uh, which is uh, what we what is called open control vocabularies. We'll have a look at this in the next slide. Having a closer look at the Claring concept registry, um, it started with ISOCAD. I think it was Christian that Paris mentioned it. It's implemented in SCOS, but um, it's right now a collection of concepts. It has been system identifiers, but uh, there are no links between the internal concepts and there are no relations to external concepts. Uh, right now, there's a lack of curation, so there are many similar concepts like description, let's say, or descriptor, and there is no link between them. So it's hard to use. Uh, for the use of SCOS vocabularies, as I said, um, these are uh, right now limited to those managed by Clarin, but there is a discussion on the deployment of external SCOS vocabularies. Also, this could be part of our discussion uh, at the, this cafe. And there are good reasons why this is done, but let's discuss this. Uh, for this uh, session, for this cafe session, I think it's also important to mention the Claria CMD to RDF project, which uh, Dieter mentioned, and that looks into the RDF representations of client metadata records and collections. Um, I'll try to go briefly to what uh, Mike and uh, or he just mentioned, and it's important, it's the interoperability, not just between resources of the same type, but between data and services. This in Claren is assisted with the language resource switchboard, which from the VLO matches values for two metadata elements, language and format, into the same metadata elements in the services, so that a user can find a resource that he likes, uh, that uh, suits his research, and match it, the, match it with the services that have the same values for these elements. Um, use the service and get the process output. Um, an endeavor in the same direction, uh, but with a slightly different, with a slightly richer uh, use is the, uh, using the Greek Clarin workflow registry, where we use uh, matching values for four elements. Uh, annotation types and annotation vocabulary also, which allows us to also uh, process previously processed corpora and create workflows between uh, services that um, have, uh, have the same matching values for these uh, for this elements, uh, for these properties. Uh, what is important I would like to emphasize is that we use for these elements uh, the values from the OMTD ontology, and we plan to also link them to other similar metadata vocabularies. This is very important. This is the work that uh, uh, was mentioned already uh, in uh, Jorge's, I think, slide. It has to do with uh, finding not only finding formats and vocabularies that can be used for processed, uh, or for processed resources so that we can go not only from data sets to tools, but also to data. Start looking at data and seeing how we can um, how we can link them and how we can access them uh, from the same source. Uh, this is something that is being uh, the there's ongoing in a consolidated lot vocabulary for linguistic annotations, and this is done in the framework of Nexus and uh, W3C Group, the linked data for language technology. Uh, as I said, this is a lot of ongoing work on linked data. And uh, I will now finish my presentation. Thank you.